I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? You know, that has become a really cool staple. Everybody tells me, what's up? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Man, I have the best seller right here from Ireland. And you guys know, like my last name on my father's side is McFerrin. So he's got a little bit of something. something. We may even be cousins. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. So I wanted to say I am so very excited to have my next author on the show today. Mr. Tom Richards is here. He is the number one best-selling author in Ireland. And I am just, I'm so happy and, and just graced. I'm, I mean, he even showed me like this hillside of where his house is. I'm jealous. Okay, I'm going to get over it. Mr. Richards, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, well, thank you for calling me Mr. Richards. Yahweh. It's Tom. <laughs> so, Tom, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you to all the people watching and listening to this. I really appreciate it. No problems. So tell us about yourself. How did you become this uh, amazing author? I don't know how amazing I am. I mean, it is true. I, I started, uh, well, it all started back in 1993. I started writing a thing called The Lost Scrolls of New Grange, and that went to number three in the uh, young adults bestseller list in Ireland. And then the next novel was Hotfoot and that went to number one over here. And I kept writing. Then I started writing screenplays and I, I optioned Hotfoot to my best friend, Liam O'Neill. And unfortunately, Liam can't be with us now because I'm afraid he, uh, he died of COVID about 21 months ago and uh my best friend but that's how i started and i kept writing and i oh. write every day you know that's what you do you know? <laughs> you know? yeah i hear you so. i hear you wow i am so sorry about your best friend you know i kind of know you know whether they're here or not when they're absent it is it is horrific yeah it, it was it's it's been a terrible time yeah yeah i'm sorry about that but as you go on you know, how is it that you can do this and not even understand how it's done sometimes, but at the most be a top seller? I mean, when that happened to you, how did that make you feel? Now, when you say understand, you know, you have to understand what you're writing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've taught uh, sophomores in college screenwriting and mm -hmm. I'm giving a, I'm, I'm, I'm giving free writing courses on TikTok. You can find me at Tommy J if you want to look me up. They're free. You have to understand exactly what you're writing, particularly in screenwriting. You've seen feature films. Mm -hmm. One of, I mean, Castaway is one of my feature films. Every shot, everything you see is pre-planned. There's not one word in a screenplay. <laughs> I mean, a screenplay is only about 20,000 words long, 20 to 30,000 words long. And I mean, you want to make sure every word makes a difference. So, you know, wow. so, wow. I mean, it's today I got done with uh, something new, my next novel. This will be my 11th or 12th, one or the other. It's called Unbaptized. And the story takes place right here. I'll uh, that I now I started it now I'll be finished with it in about six months and then we'll publish it and see what happens you know mm. and uh today I finished what's called a chapter breakdown and it's sort of a map yeah well yeah yeah you, you know I use a screenplay format so it's you know like part one act one and then the sequences there are eight sequences in every sequence in Hollywood screenplays and so it's bullet pointed, each chapter, bullet pointed all the way to the end. It's the map. Mm -hmm. So you don't get lost. Many people want to write novels and they'll start and they might write a chapter or two and they get lost. They don't know what else to write. And there's a novel in everybody, you know, every of us. Going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, well, it's free. I mean, look me up if you don't mind on TikTok. You know, as they say, Tommy J. Tommy J on TikTok. So, Got it. T -O -M -M -Y. They're free. You know, oh. so I mean, so 
you know, and it tells you how to use how to use a proper structure. And then I think I've done about uh, 20 lessons right now or something like that. That is amazing. So every word means something. Every word has to be directed to the point. I mean, is that because you only have a certain amount of time to get through the entire story and you want to make sure that every every ounce of the story is described purposefully? Yeah. I mean, there are certain writers and directors who can get away with three hour films. We're seeing a lot of those right now. Most films are 120 minutes long, two hours, almost exactly. Some are less, like horror films are 90 minutes long, about. And I mean, you know, you, <laughs> it's really, really hard. <laughs> you know? I can't imagine. I, you know. So. Is it better to write a novel than to write a screenplay? Or should you write a novel and then turn it into a screenplay? Which, which way is harder? Well, writing the novel first helps. Now, with uh, Dolphin Song, we went backwards. Liam and I started the uh, Dolphin Song screenplay 24 years ago. And I could not do it. I have Upstairs is my laptop, and I probably have 50 or 60 different renditions of it. You know, I mean, I didn't know what to write. And then I took some uh, screenwriting courses in Europe, and I started to learn how to write. The best screenwriting I course I took was a thing called Ex Equinox Germany. And I walked in there, and I can't remember her name. God, what she she did. She was the uh, editor for Australia's rabbit proof fence. Brilliant, mm. brilliant. <laughs> I sat down <laughs> and she'd read the screenplay that we'd sent in and she said, uh, Tom, this is great. And she said, there's a problem. You don't know how to write. Now sit there and take notes and I'll teach you. And I did. <laughs> so. <laughs> wow, wow. I mean, but okay. So do you suggest that everyone that wants to write a screenplay go to a seminar or go and learn how to write first? Yeah. I mean, go to something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, there are naturally born screenwriters, I'm sure, and novelists. But I mean, I don't. I'm reading uh, the Rama sequence you know, series by Arthur C. Clarke right now, one of my favorite novelists. And um uh, I don't think he ever took, he, he's just a natural born uh, screenwriter and uh, novelist. He made famous really by 2001, A Space Odyssey. He wrote the screenplay and was given permission to write the, uh, the uh, novel that was part of his contract. And 20, 2001 is uh, brilliant. A Childhood's End is one of the best novels ever written. Mm. And I mean, it is a brilliant science fiction novel. And wow. that is Rama. It's interesting. I read the first book in the series and that's faith based. And so is the one I'm reading right now. This the, the third book in the series. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to the second one. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just a brilliant read. You know? Wow. Wow. That is amazing. You know, I am just so thankful that you're here today. You know, there are just so many different things going on with you. So let's go into that because if we don't, we're not going to have enough time. <laughs> I'm just going to say, because you have so much stuff. Okay. So you got the books and, and you got the movies, screenplays and stuff. I mean, let's just go through it. Let's just go through it all. Go ahead. Just run it down for us. Uh, well, how about novels first? I mean, yes. if you go to, you, uh, uh, people who are watching or listening, uh, she's going to put up a card in a few minutes with the uh, with her company website. Right. And there are all of the books, some information on the screenplays and some videos and all that kind of stuff. And uh, as I said, Dolphin Song went to number one. And uh, I was shocked. I mean, you know, that is dedicated to Carmel Murray my loving partner who has faith in me and Liam O'Neill, uh, my friend. That's all I wrote. Carmel, what's, what's really sad about it is Carmel's uh, 50, well, she'll be 60 on Saturday and Carmel has uh, early onset Alzheimer's. 
and uh, she can't be here with us either. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I keep writing. You know, I write for the two of them and many more. You know, so I mean, you've got that book, and then you've got all the others. You know, I mean, the best one coming out soon, I think, I hope, um, is a, a thing called uh, the Dazzling Universe of Helen Fox. That's faith-based, but it's also a romance and science fiction. I write cross-genre, genre, and I primarily write magical realism. Uh, I read a book years ago from a, a by a Mexican woman. It was brilliant. And uh, I started writing mag- magical realism. Mm. I'm not sure how much it'll sell. I think it'll sell quite a few books. And we'll make a screenplay of that soon, I think. Yeah. Wow. wow. So you got the books and now the screenplays. Well, that's how it works. You know, write the books. Hopefully somebody options or you can have the buys the rights to, to the screenplay for each novel. And then you, you, you sort of turn your back and you say, good luck. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, my gosh, uh, my goodness. But uh, OK, so you have you have all of this other stuff coming out. I just want to kind of make sure that we go through it all because you were you, you know, you were talking about it before we came on the show today about the, the movie or the screenplay that the whole thing. And just I want you to go ahead and make sure that we get this done because you are an amazing talent, amazing talent. And there's well, so many people out there that are just looking up to you right now. You know, I don't know how amazing talent I am. I mean, right now I'm an unknown writer. I sold quite a few books on all the, you know, all my novels. But, you know, I mean, it's a program like like this that informs people that I'm I'm available, so we say. And uh, I I love to write. It's all I do. I, I became a full-time writer about, uh, oh, Seven years ago, six years ago, and less than that, actually. Sorry, um, yeah, I was writing full time, but I mean, you know, most writers are penniless. And I'd retired. I I owned a marketing company called Earthnet up in Dublin, and retired and moved down here and got my pension and whatnot. And I started writing full time, and now I've got this company. You know, Storylines Entertainment is going places. I think. And uh, we'll see. I mean, the the, uh, the best example is Dolphin Song. That took me, the screenplay took me 23 years to write. I had no idea what to write. I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. I, the protagonists, there are two protagonists, Dawn and Michael. And I remember at this screenplay thing that I attended, uh, Equinox Germany, I sat down with the guy who wrote Backfire, you know, the feature film Backfire. Yeah. yeah, he read the screenplay. He says, oh, Tom, this is great. Big, beefy guy, you know, with sort of blonde red hair. You know, Tom, this is wonderful. There's only one problem. And I said, what? He says, you don't know how to write. I said, you've been talking to what's <laughs> it? And she, he said, now, look, he says, I've had the same problem. The problem is, you know, there's something about the screenplay you don't want. And he says, I know what it is. I've got a cat catalog or Cadillac in my screenplay, my written screenplay. And it's pink. I'm going to change it to purple. <laughs> and that'll fix the problem. Guess what? It didn't. It was lousy. And then a friend of his came to him and said, well, the problems are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, down to Z. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Rewrote the screenplay. It was great. <laughs> so that's what you do. Wow. In Dolphin, I tried everything. I tried. I tried. I tried women of color. Mm. I. Yeah, I did. I had a uh, well. Back when I was writing, I called her Dawn, a black American. I guess now it's African American, but you know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it anymore. I've been gone from the United States for too long. I was, I've been gone for over 40 years now. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, I tried that and I tried, um, well, people of color and I mean, different ways of looking at things a different face and nothing worked. And I took courses and I figured it out. 
Mm. And now it's it, it's a bestseller and it's continuing to sell well. We're in pre-production with Dolphin Song and Lost Lovers. And, uh, you know, that means that, and we're raising money and we've already kicked in about uh, $5 million. Wow. But Dolphin Song, as I told you, is a big, big film. Yeah. With Without the marketing, we're looking at $160 million to make it. Oh, my God. I, well, I think people like it. And I mean, if you, on, if you go on to our website, you'll see a new, when I get the chance to do it, uh, you'll see a new cinematic video of it. And uh, there's also a thing called a mood movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's a sea story. And a story about a strong woman. Dawn's a really strong woman. Mm. About God. And it's about uh, a kid that, uh, you know, Dawn, Dawn and Jason, that's her son, watched as a trawler holding her husband in the hold, you know, below decks, sank. Mm. A huge big fire and explosion. And she turned around and there was a pod of dolphins swimming. And uh, she watched as one of the, a unique white-faced dolphin plunged into the sea and rescued this guy. Wow. And I'm not going to go any further. You can buy this book. <laughs> all I'm already you, in it. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is that he's alive. All right. right. Yeah. And the last, in the last chapter has Dawn and Jason and Michael changed beyond any recognition. Mm-hmm. Guess what? They're dolphins now. And they sail to the west. Right there to the setting sun. I can look at it. Mm-hmm. And uh, sail to the west. And the last line is Michael this is not the end of our story. This is the beginning. Mm. And that's the way, you know, when, when people die, and this is the faith I have, you have, right. a lot of people, you know, where do you go when you die? I think we go to heaven. And that's what Dolphin Song says. Mm. We go to heaven, we get to see our ancestors, and our relatives, the people we love most. I'll get to see Liam. My my parents are both dead, mom and dad. So many friends have died this year from co well last two years from COVID and yeah, the list is that long, you know. And I pray for most of them every night. I think of I forget a few names, you know, too many. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm going to do. That's what Dolphin song says. I've got a great friend of mine, and I'm going to call her out. She'll see this, Harsha Ganatra. How are you? How are you, dear? Harsh is uh, sort of my, uh, well, she's sort of a president of uh, our office in uh, in the United States for Storylines Entertainment. She's Hindu. And some of the Hindus believe that we are re- reincarnated as do the Buddhists. Mm-hmm. And you never know. If when I die, I can come back as a dolphin. Fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of scared of the water. <laughs> well, I don't mind. You know, all you have to do is search your back roll, make kids, you know, you know, who cares? No bills, right? No bills, no more work. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Have fun. laughs> wow, wow. That you know, uh, putting together these kind of things and actually getting the funds and all of that. How has that been for you? It's hard. It's really hard. I'm fortunate. I've got a, one of Liam O'Neill's best friends was a guy by the name of Heino Deckard. And uh, Heino encouraged me to apply uh, to a, a, an Irish organization called Screen Ireland. They're a funding body over here. They fund mm-hmm. films. Mm-hmm. Uh, I applied and uh, I made the cut. We made the cut with uh, Dolphin Song and Lost Lovers. And by the end of the month, we should, we'll, we'll get something. And all that I, I've always told people, I, I don't care if I get one euro from each of them. 
you know, it just means I can put the little uh, logo right of screen and on the screenplay. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. It Globally. is a big deal. Yeah. So I mean, we'll see, but I'm 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 quite positive. And even if we don't, as I said, we already got about five uh, million euro or dollars in the kitty. And even if we don't raise 180 or 160 dollars, uh, million dollars, Liam said to me that he could make this. Now, this is years ago. He could make this feature film, including a, 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 a tank, you know, what full of water at the old Mary Tyler Moore Studios here, north of here. Uh, and blue screen and whatnot for 20, uh, 20, 20 million euro. So, you know, there's inflation, but we, we might be able to make it for about 80 million. Mm. And that's still, I, uh, yeah, well, you wouldn't have a check for 80 million that wouldn't bounce, would you? I'll give you my address. You can send it to me. It and I'll keep, hey. you can be an executive producer. No problem. Let me tell you, it's got moon boots, okay? It's going to bounce so high. You're going to go into the upper atmosphere. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> what else you, would you like to know? Oh, my God. So you have, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of just go into this. Your, uh, your film, Merlin, The Magic Begins, can still be seen on cable TV. Am I correct? You've written yeah. for RTE Television Ireland and RAI. You've published yeah. your nonfiction memoir, A Survival's Guide to Living in Ireland, every year on Amazon. Which, and you will soon write another memoir about your life, uh, Ireland, with uh, with Carmel, Hasha. That, your, that, well, I'm doing, I'm doing, I've got a new blog. Ah. A, yank, a yank survives in Ireland, dot, blogspot dot com or something like that. <laughs> and, it's, it, it's a lot of fun, but it's sometimes really hard. Yesterday I wrote about Carmel and early onset Alzheimer's. And uh, shall we say I had a really bad day yesterday? You know, um, you know, she's not here. Yeah, I know. I know how you feel. I definitely know. I can, I definitely can empathize with you. My grandmother, she's a hundred years old. And I was hoping that she would, you know, hundred. 100. Her mom oh. survived till 104. And her oh, father wow. went to 101. She's 100. And she doesn't remember me. So she's not here. No. Yeah, no. I know how you mean. I know how you feel. I know what you mean. She's somewhere. Well, which brings me to this. I mean, what what I'm doing is that, you know, we we do. Well, I is it, this is also video recorded, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought it was just audio. So I'm going to take the crowd out here and see. It's so I so cool there. Look at that. I have mowed the lawn because we've got a problem with the bee population and uh, oh. butterflies. And mm -hmm. so we're, but people tent camp down here all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll bring in here, even though there's Bluebell, folks. <laughs> That's my uh, just creature. <laughs> Your creature? <laughs> Yes. And up there are all the books. Some of them are just beautiful. Uh, uh, had an outfit called Authors in. Uh, well, let's see. Now, this one, that's Lost Lovers. Mm. And that's the one that's going to be made into a film. Mm. And then Dolphin Song, that, that's the other one being made, made into a film. And those are the other books. You know, this one was really hard to write. That was the toughest one. Always come home. That's done pretty well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and uh, oh, that's what I'm reading. Hot Foot, that's the one that went to number one. Mm. Uh, Lost Girls of New Grange went to three. That's an anthology we published uh, not some time ago. And A Survivor's Guide to New Grange or to uh, Living in Ireland, which you were just talking about. Yeah. But all of these, you know, campers will come in here. And what we're doing is this. We're... Uh, you know, a lot of people suffered the last couple of years. And so what we're doing is we're uh, going to, assuming we make a profit on anything, <laughs> mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're going to set up a fund and a portion, a large portion, like 33% of the profits will go into that fund and we will sort 
uh, support people. You know, right. you know. I I mean, you and I both, and many of your, you know, your viewers know people that don't have the education they want. Homeless yeah. people. Oh, out. That's bluebell barking now. Out. <laughs> Go on. Out. <laughs> The bluebird, she barks. Oh <laughs> I stay there. But what we're going to do is let's say, you know, like Bill, it's not that we'll make it that much money, but you know, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett stop, set up a fund, you know, mm -hmm. and what they've done is they've invested it, set up this trust, and they're giving money to people. And I'd like to set up a trust if we make enough money. For people that are homeless, yeah, on an education. Mm -hmm. Let's say you can't afford a college education, and you apply to this little fund, and you say, uh, "Look, I want a degree in nursing because there's a shortage, mm -hmm. or I want a degree in architecture, or in writing, or whatever English." And we'll look at it. You know, this little tiny committee will look at it, and they'll select a number of them, and they'll say, "Okay." We're going to give you a soft loan. And what that means is that you get the loan for whatever your school fees are. And if you get a job and make enough money, you pay it back. And then I want to give money to people that are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia and the surviving families of COVID, people that still have COVID. Uh, I'd like to give some money to the survivors of 9-11. You know, people that need it. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to bring out dog. She's a very vicious dog. <laughs> and she goes in circles. She goes in circles because she's half blind in one eye. But, oh. And, I, and what you do is you take one of these little bonio things and then you go like this. Bluebell, here, out. And that's that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It, it works. It does. <laughs> She's wow. going to be in the cast of one of the films. Of <laughs> starring role. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, your, yeah. your films are scheduled to open in 2026 with the pre-production happening right now. That's... How how is that feeling for you? Again, I'm nervous about it. I mean, about one in every thousand screenplays are made into films. Something like that. And I mean, you know, the odds are against us, but we just keep trying. You know, one of them will go to films. And I mean, uh, you know, one of them. And, you know, if you got 11 books and maybe seven of them might be worthy of a screenplay, which means they could be turned into a feature film. Mm -hmm. You just keep plugging along, you know, right. and it's hard. And I mean, uh, George Lucas, you know, made famous by a little thing called Star Wars. I read okay. up about, it. he started with nothing, absolutely nothing. And what happened was George was, he was writing two films at once. He was writing Star Wars and what is the, one of the uh, uh, crusades, come on. It doesn't matter. He was writing two films, right? And he, he, finished, all, he finished Star Wars and he walked into this producer's office and he said, here's my, my screenplay. Guy had read it. He said, George, this isn't going to go very well because it's sort of cowboys in outer space. And George says, well, you know, I think it's going to go very well. So the, the, the direct, you know, George, he, he had quite a name for himself and George agreed to put up money. And it was probably co-produced. I can't remember. But anyway, now, now, George, what about your fee? You know, you need a director's fee and a writer's fee. And George says, OK, I'll take a producer's fee. I want to be a co-producer and I'll take a little bit of a director's fee. I don't want a writer's. I'll t I won't take any director's fees or writer's fees. And the producer said, why? He says, well, what else do you want? I want the merchandise for Star Wars. 
And then Star Wars took off. And every time you buy anything, a little Pez thing. Yeah. Lucas Films makes a penny. That was amazing. And that's how he, you know. <laughs> so you don't know. I mean, I'm going to, you know, when, when, when we sign, if we, if we sign contracts, uh, Storylines Entertainment is sort of in the driver's seat on this because we own all the rights. And what I'll agree is I can say, look, you can have the, uh, oh, if it's a book, you can have anything to do with print. It's, if it's the, uh, if it's a producer, you can have anything to do with the screenplay, but we keep the merchandising rights. Yeah. 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 That's and you know, you also have always come home. What is that? <laughs> Um, Yawa, do you know anybody with, um, do you know anybody that's ever been, uh, involuntarily committed to a psychiatric unit? Yes. Really? Yes. I have twice. Mm. I won't go into detail, but Always Come Home is based on a two true stories. And, uh, it was the hardest book I've ever read ever written i remember karma was here when i wrote it she wouldn't read it she wrote every she read every page i printed out in dolphin song she wouldn't read always come home and uh well it's about a guy by the name of david bloom and he's uh incarcerated in a uh psychiatric unit in a little place called bantry which isn't too far from here i was and uh, he got out eventually, sort of. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, gotta gotta read it. It's I, when I did the research, if I remember right, two million people a year globally are committed to psychiatric units. Yeah, against their against their will. Yeah, yeah, I know the about law, that. Mm -hmm. The the laws got to change. I mean. Now, when I went in both times, you know, there was the, the best time was the first first time I went in. I went up in a little, little town called Novin, County Meath, you know, about seven hours drive from here. And I, a long story, but I found myself in the psychiatric unit and I had a really good lawyer. And I called this guy, Philip Little, and I said, Phil, I'm not insane. And he said, I know you're not. Don't worry about it. I'll come up and get you. And I met a guy, I met a number of people, and really nice psychiatric nurses and a good doctor. <laughs> this guy by the name of Radio Man. <laughs> radio Man used to have his, he used to go like this, right? He turned on his radio and he'd say, Tom, there's code coming through. I say, really, Radio Man? He said, yep. The, 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 the uh, country of Ireland is under attack. We're going to be hit by nuclear weapons. <laughs> really? Oh That's goodness. right. Oh, and I'll, we'll, we'll, I'm sure something will happen. The United States will probably get involved and they'll stop it. Great. Go to bed. <laughs> I'd have nightmares. <laughs> Jeez. It was, uh, well, it's, it, it all helped me write uh, Always Come Home. And uh, that guy's in there. And a fellow called Whale Man, this big big fella mm. and he was a great guy i mean he could pick you up with one finger and uh he but he was not insane he was i think he was playing he wanted some time on, by his own you know own self and it's free over here you show up in a psychiatric you you take a psychiatric accept, uh, uh, assessment you can fail it easily mm. and he in, you know wow and yeah, I was there for about uh, four months and then went home and got a job. And he's fine. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, Tom, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, you have so much going on and I love your suggestion. If you want to write, please go to some kind of a, of a writing class and learn how to write, especially screenplays. Um, and it, and how hard it is to raise that money, but also how amazing it is to actually have all of these things in play. Did we forget anything today? 
Well, one thing I'd leave people with is, you know, most of us want to write a novel or a screenplay. Mm -hmm. And let's say you're not published. Let's say you write a book of any kind and you're not published. Throw it up on Amazon. You might not make any money, but you are now a published author. There you it go. helps. It makes you more confident. You know, you need a cover, but you can you can do that easily on Amazon with a thing called Cover Creator. So you don't need any help. Just do it. You That's know? it. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Yahweh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you so much, too. Oh, and to all, no all the viewers, uh, farewell from uh, farewell from absolutely lovely Irish in Southwest County Cork. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. God bless you all. And you too, and you too. And thank you guys so much. And don't forget to Dare to Be Different. We're going to have all of this information about Tom's books, the all of it, everything, the website, everything in the description box below. So it'll be easy for you guys to go ahead and get that. And don't forget, this is how we do. We support each other here. So go there, look at it, follow, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you got to do, whatever you feel you have to do. And also, if you feel like you need to read some of those books before they come movies, that's a good thing too. All right, guys, until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time that I upload. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. I dare to be different. I dare to be different.